Uh, we are focused on a once in a lifetime, well, maybe my lifetime, not some of the younger people here, opportunity to transform the Medi-Cal system. And I brought on Mark Galley for one purpose, besides his personality, which is very amenable. Um, he's here. Uh, it is his expertise. Uh, he has city and county expertise, but he's also an intellect. He's an academic, but he's a practitioner. And he has spent the last nine months, in fact, this was his interview. He said, I'm not interested in this unless you're interested in innovation and transformation. I'm not here to add 10% to the budget, 3%. He says, I want to change the incentives because I know how the incentives work and I know how they don't work. I want to integrate mental health, substance abuse. I want a behavioral health mindset. I want to focus on wellness and prevention. I want to focus on recuperative care. I want to focus on driving more Medi-Cal dollars, which is Medicaid dollars, to housing, rapid rehousing, to subsidies. I want to focus on the chronic, the high utilizers. I want to reduce costs, take those savings, and amplify programs like whole person care that are working. I want to do whole person care on steroids, a word you shouldn't have used as a medical professional, but nonetheless, a point of emphasis that we want to take whole person care and expand it statewide. All of that made sense to me. And the good news, it's been socialized with all of the tectonic plates of influencers in the state, and most are favorably receptive to it. They want to see more details, and so do all of you. And that's the job of the next number of months, to flesh this out, to work with the legislature uh, and advance this new national model. If we do this right, no one in the United States will have done something as transformative as this. You want to ask about what we're doing on behavioral health, mental health? This is it. You want to talk about what we're doing on substance abuse? This is it. You want to talk about reform at the county level and accountability, transparency? This is it. You want to talk about stabilizing high utilizers and addressing the issue of homelessness and housing? This is it. And you also want to talk about wellness centers and schools? It's also part of this effort as well, partnerships, capacity uh, building. We're going to submit um, our request to the federal government, because this requires not just support of the legislature, it requires a waiver from the Trump administration. It's called the 1915B waiver. For the two of you in this room, that we're happy to hear that. It is not an 1115 waiver. That's the past. This is a 1915B waiver. That's the future. And we're investing $348 million of general fund in this space, $695 million overall in this space, uh, in this budget. Uh, I can regale you about the work we did on Medi-Cal last year with Prop 56 monies and all the reimbursement enhancements, the loan repayments of $120 million. I just want to remind you of all of those things because they're important. A lot of those bleed into this new year. We're building on all of those things. Though I will say, for those that are interested, Prop 656 is a declining revenue source. That's the whole point. You want to increase tobacco taxes. The idea is to reduce consumption. Uh, We're going to backfill some of those losses, particularly for the Song Brown program, other programs that we think are top priorities, but we project a 3.9% reduction in Prop 60 or 56 money in this year's uh, budget. We also want to talk more broadly about behavioral health because we're going after parity. Mark my words, DHMC is getting in the business of real enforcement, not tacit enforcement. I want to prepare folks for some high profile fines. They will do their job. I don't need legislation to do that. I don't need, you know, be encouraged to do that. They just need to do their damn job, and they need to go aggressively on parity. We've been talking about this for too many years, and I am saying this looking in one of these damn cameras because there are folks out there that are not doing the right thing, and they will be fined, and they will be held accountable, and I will deeply highlight their lack of accountability in this space. And so we are going aggressively on the parity issue and as a mandate and a mission for my team over there. And I just want to applaud them for recognizing the imperative. Uh, we want to reform Prop 63. I can get in 
you know, in the Q&A about some of our thoughts. We've been working with Daryl Seinberg. It's inspiration. Uh, we've got a team, Tom Inzel, as you know, we hired, used to run Obama's mental health work. They've been mocking up some ideas. It's not just, yeah, we just want to clarify it. We want to focus it. Uh, we also want to get more serious about this reversion policy. We still have people sitting on a lot of reserves. Last reserve number I have is $539 million of reserves folks are sitting on. They're not spending. We believe conservatively 161 million of that is imprudent. They need to spend it or we're going to revert those dollars back to the state and reinvest it. But we're going to get more aggressive in that space. That's an administrative function, but it's also reform. So it's not just legislative reform. It's not just ballot reform, though everything's on the table. Uh, but it is reform. We want to focus more acuity on homelessness, the justice system, uh, first episode psychosis for youth and young adults and workforce. That's the mantra coming from Daryl Steinberg, Mayor Steinberg, and Tom Insel, and they're right, and we want to reinforce that. We're going to have a new work group that's going to work on that, and we're going to look at the Lantern Petrus Short Act. And I, look, I, I'm a civil libertarian, and I'm deeply sensitive to about the civil liberties issues, and I'm going to maintain that sensitivity. I'm not here to alarm anybody. I'm not here to enliven uh, or rather create anxiety. I am here to enliven. Um, that act was conceived when I was conceived. <laughs> and the world's changed, including me. Um, and, uh, and I just think we need to meet the better the conditions that exist today. And so we're leaning into that. You're going to ask me what specifically I'm going to hew and haw try to misdirect you. You'll be left wanting, but that's intentional because we are working through the details of this and it's tough stuff. And in fact, my staff said, we hope you don't bring that up today. But I felt it necessary to bring it up because I just want folks to know where I am on this and, uh, and know that also just ties into to Cal AIM as well. I'm so proud of our work in this space, healthcare. No state did what we did last year. I know you know, some folks are just in the business of focusing on small things, um, but we're doing big things. And I say that to make this point. Last year, there was so much attention given to expansion, regardless of your immigration status, zero to 26. We were proud of that, but that was not what we did last year. We did the biggest, deepest dive subsidies for the middle class of any state in American history. We deepened subsidies for people earning 250 to 400%. We expanded subsidies for families earning up to $150,000, that's folks earning up to 600% of federal poverty. No one did what we did. Covered California had less than 1% inflationary growth in terms of costs. No one does what Peter Lee does. I'm really proud of their work. I'm proud of the work of this state. We made progress on Prop 56. We made progress on prescription drugs. I'm going to talk more about that. We deepened those subsidies. We focused on value-based payments and mental health and workforce this year. We got to get serious about reducing health care costs in a much more transparent and meaningful way. Uh, when I talk about transparency, we mean transparency. More data, we want more options for coverage, we want to reduce cost of care. And that's why we think it's important we create this new Office of Health Care Affordability that will do much of this. There's been a lot of consolidation with providers. There's a lot of regional disparities in terms of costs. We're going to highlight those regional disparities. We're going to create specific cost targets for all sectors to achieve. And we are going to assess penalties if they don't achieve those targets. If that didn't wake up members of this system, I don't know what will. Now, that's rhetoric. I hope it not bluff. And it's incumbent upon all of us to truly architect that strategy. But I'm showing you what the intention is. And I'm letting you know, based on what we did last year, we mean business. We made a lot of progress last year. And we're going to make progress on this this year. We have a public option. Just so folks know, California has a public option. It's called Color California. It has public health plans, Color California, and, of course, Medi-Cal. We just want to strengthen our public option. And so we have a lot of work that we're doing in that space to expand eligibility and create more opportunities. Very excited about this. 
I keep looking over there to Mark Galley. That's why he's here, because he's a big part of this budget presentation. We are signaling in this document our intention to go after surprise billing. Um, I'm not holding my, if you're going to ask me where I am on, was it 1161? Choose bill. Maybe I'm not 1611. Uh, not 1161, proving the dyslexia. Uh, I uh, am not committed myself to that bill. I'm not, but I'm committed to the spirit of those efforts. And I just want to make it clear that uh, we need to do more in that space. And we are committed through our trailer bill process to do that. Uh, the blanks will be filled in over the course of the next few months. We've been mocking some of that up. That, by the way, is something they also didn't want me to talk about today uh, because they knew you'd ask prescriptive specific questions, but uh, know that we are leaning in and hold me to account. We're expanding coverage, regardless of your immigration status, for all of those 65 and over. We believe in universal health care. We believe that universal health care lowers costs for everybody. We believe the evidence bears that out. We believe it's the right thing to do morally and ethically. We also believe it is the financially responsible thing to do. Some don't believe in doing the financially responsible thing. Some don't believe in the morality and ethics of allowing people to die on the streets and sidewalks or, God forbid, get the flu and then allow you to get the flu because we didn't invest in a flu shot. I would prefer to invest in the flu shot I would prefer to invest in keeping people out of emergency rooms. I would prefer to spend less money and do the right thing. So I am proud to support that expansion, and I want to thank, uh, well, from Razo to Rambula and other members upstairs that have been fierce advocates on this. They deserve credit. Uh, but also note, when I was mayor, we did this. I made a commitment. We're following through. And you'll ask me, what about everybody else? And I will caution you, that is a huge price tag on the front end that right now we cannot absorb, but we can build on last year's work. Interestingly, that's $64.2 million. I can't wait to see some reporting suggesting it's the entire $222 billion budget. It's $64.2 million in this year's budget. If you are curious, it will annualize at 320 general fund. That's 27,000 people that we project, but that's a moving target. You've seen 25,700. I saw another report that was 28,000. I'm offering today's number, 27,000. Prescription drugs, we did a lot of work last year on a single purchasing uh, plan. We did pay for delay strategies, more transparency. Uh, on increases. We did a lot on that bulk purchasing that we anticipated would save us $393 million. Here's the good news. We think we'll save $456.6 million in the out years, not 393. That includes, by the way, 340B savings for the two of you in this room that are curious about 340B and those watching at home that are impacted by this. Uh, we are going to invest $105 million to deal with 340B clinics' loss of revenue. So that should address um, member Pan's concerns, many of the community clinics. Invariably, there'll be an article saying, well, we're not sure that's enough. We anticipate that, but we committed last year to work with the clinics. That commitment now is demonstrable. Uh, 50 $2.5 million will be the general fund component on an ongoing basis of that $105 million contribution. Uh, we believe as a nation, nation state, fifth largest economy on the planet, that we could do more on prescription drug prices beyond just being a single purchaser. We believe we can get in the business of generics. We can brand through California RX, our generic drugs program. Uh, we are already in active conversation with some of the major purchasers in this state. And forgive me in advance for not getting in the details of the negotiations. One guarantee of this not working is telling you who we're negotiating with. But I can assure you things like insulin are top of mind in terms of that prescription um, uh, generic program and its strategy. Uh, we're building partnerships, and we will have a detailed spring proposal on this uh, that needs legislative support. We're also doing things on 
a best price is, both not just nationally, but we're going to move a best price Medi-Cal proposal that looks at international best pricing, what we call the Golden State Drug Pricing Schedule, also will be advanced, which will be a single price schedule for everybody. Uh, that is very exciting and very controversial. Uh, we'll continue our work at the state and county level on prescription drugs, uh, getting everybody to pool their purchases uh, with ours and significantly drive down prescription drugs. I just don't know of a state doing more on this than the state of California. Uh, we have a unique responsibility to show the way, and I'm very, very enthusiastic about what we're doing. We'll continue our work on Alzheimer's and cognitive care. Uh, we're going to increase our developmental uh, services provider rates. Last year, the DDS rates increased $413.3 million. This year, we're adding an additional $96 million on top of the $413.3, so we're close now to half a billion dollars. I recognize that we have a gap from that study. We still have more work to do in this space. I'm very clear-headed about that, but I want folks to know we're making progress. An area that I care deeply about, and you should care deeply about if you care about the issues of homelessness uh, and those that are struggling, it's the incompetent to stand trial, the IST community. Uh, we've got a six-year pilot. We've been working on this for months. We're going to fund that pilot with close to $25 million. Uh, and we have got some work at Porterville we'll be doing and some off-ramp services working with the counties, and we're funding those efforts uh, to tune of an additional uh, $16, 17000000 million. Uh, by the way, just on the MCO tax, I may not have finished that segment. Um, we project we'll receive $1.2 billion in 2122. That's why it's not included in our budget. The full $1.9 million billion, remember it's a three-year tax, $1.9 billion is its annualized cost. That won't be um, included until 2223. That's the reason we could not in good conscience include it. I just want to make that. Uh, clear. We've already submitted to CMS our documents. I think we did that last September, um, and uh, we're working hard to get that done. We'll get it done. Uh, 